Uh, we're on our series called Kingdom Culture, and I believe, Lord willing, I believe this is the last one. So uh, if you've got your Bibles, let's get those out. We get excited here at the Rhodes Church when we turn to the Word of God because we believe it is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So come on, everybody, E. Rhodes family, Mount Carmel, North City, let's get pumped. Open our Bibles to Matthew chapter 13. Woo! Matthew 13. Our vision is to connect people with Jesus from all roads of life. So we uh, pray that you are connected with him today. We want you to remember him, celebrate him. He's the best. He's awesome. Sermon notes are available there in your worship guide or on the YouVersion Bible app if you're using those. Let's jump into Matthew chapter 13. I'm going to start reading in verse 47. It says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet that was cast into the sea and gathered some of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore and they sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but threw the bad away. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come forth separate the wicked from the just and cast them into the furnace of fire and there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Jesus said to them, have you understood these things? And they said to him, yes, Lord. Then he said to them, therefore, every scribe instructed concerning the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out his, of his treasure things new and old. Let's just pray. Jesus, this is your word. Holy Spirit, I thank you for bringing life to it bringing revelation, understanding, and clarity. Lord, we look to you and we thank you for life-giving words flowing right now. Lord, I thank you that you're going to restore, you're going to heal, you're going to convict. But Lord, we just give it all to you. Come, Lord Jesus. Do what only you can do. In Jesus' awesome name, everybody say amen. amen. In this parable here, this is the last. We've been talking about Matthew chapter 13, and there's seven parables We'll talk about it, how some say there's eight, the very last one that we'll talk about there at the end. <laughs> Excuse me, the end. Puberty is a wonderful thing. <laughs> I've been going through it for about 40 years, so it's awesome. <laughs> but this parable comes with a different direction. You know, we've been talking the last couple weeks about uh, treasure hidden in the field and then the pearl of great price last week. And this parable as a change of direction. Instead of being another story about the worth of the kingdom, this parable talks more about, similar goes back to the wheat and the tares and tells us about the intermingling of good and bad for a time, but a certainty of their separation at the end. And today's message, I want to give you a preface. I want to give you a heads up that what we're going to talk about today, remember this Matthew 13 is really a sermon that Jesus is giving. Sometimes we don't think about that because we read it in chapters and verses, and really this is a recording of Matthew, of Jesus speaking a sermon. And at the end of his sermon in Matthew chapter 13, he addresses this last parable. And he shared all kinds. We talked about the seeds and mustard seed and leaven and pearls and all of this. But he comes to this last one, and I was curious to how he ended his message. And sometimes I don't believe these messages are talked about enough in churches anymore. So I want to tell you that everything that I'm going to say today was, is with all the love and compassion I believe Jesus would have for you. But I believe it's also the truth that you need to hear. Yeah. So let's look at what he's talking about here in this parable. It's the wheat and the tares that we, just, that we talked about uh, was similar to this one. And, but this one focuses simply on the last judgment that takes place. The kingdom embraces the good fish and the bad fish in this huge final sweep. So here we go. It says the kingdom of heaven is like, again, the kingdom of heaven, the principles of, of heaven, the components of heaven, the system of heaven, or the culture of heaven. We've been talking about that. The set of attitudes, values, and goals and practices. You know, we need to continue to adopt. This series is going to be over, but we cannot stop adapting the culture of the kingdom of heaven. Here's what we need to understand. Hopefully I'll remember to say this at the end, but it's coming to my mind right now, so I'm not going to take it for granted that I'll remember it again. <laughs> We've been teaching about the kingdom of heaven. It's important for you to understand the kingdom of heaven is not church. Church is where we learn about the kingdom of heaven. The problem in some people's lives, they've limited the kingdom of heaven to church. Like something I go to, something I attend. 
That is not the kingdom of heaven. You can be in a church and never touch the kingdom of heaven. Church is where we learn about the kingdom, how the kingdom works. So, again, the kingdom of heaven. Hmm. It's like a dragnet. Not a TV show for some of you. A dragnet. What is a dragnet? A dragnet is a large fishing net called a seine net. And this seine net, it would hang vertically in the water. It has floats across the top connected with, with rope. And at the bottom has weight so that when you throw this seine net out into the water, it begins to sink vertically, floats on top, and then either boats or humans will grab the ends of this. Uh, humans, when they would use it, they would put sticks on the ends of it, and they would grab and they would pull this net and the one from opposite end, and they would bring it together. I think I've got a slide there of a seine net showing where human beings are working on this. So now this is what it looks like, floats on top. Weights on the bottom. This in the middle is called the basket. That says as they're funneling it together and drawing the net together, then everything is going to be funneled into this bag there in the middle. And that's what a drag net is. It's big enough to catch a large number of different kinds of fish. So this story differentiates a little bit from the previous parables that we've been talking about in that this one speaks of acquiring a large group. Because how a same net works, it's different from fishing with a fishing pole where you have a certain bait for a certain type of fish. I'm not a fisherman by any stretch of the imagination, but I've heard fishermen talk about their stories. And so anyway, <laughs> you have... Bait and lures that work maybe for certain kinds, but in seine fishing or net fishing, it's you gather this together and whatever's inside that net is what you catch. Good, bad, ugly, it doesn't matter. Turtles, depends on what body of water you're fishing in. Crabs, lobsters, sharks, it doesn't matter. Whatever you're pulling together, it's all going to be in there. So this parable is about catching everything in one big swoop. So look what they do with this dragnet. Kingdom of Heaven is like a dragnet that was cast. Could I, babe, could you get me a bottle of water out of there? I'm just going to need a drink. This could get rough. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's not very professional, but my lovely assistant, thank you so much. Oh, let's give her a hand. Man, while they're clapping, I'm going to take a drink. Anyway, sorry. Take another drink. All right, where was I? I got distracted by my assistant. So now they cast this net into the sea. The word cast means to throw. It's the Greek word balo. It means like you take this net and they would just go, whoo, and they would let it fall. So you're throwing something and letting it fall with gravity. They're going to cast it into the sea and look what they're going to do. They're going to gather some of every kind. Every kind. It's a Greek word, genos. It means descendant, ethnic group, or race. This net's going to be cast. Genos, it's where we get our word genus. Where we go, maybe your biology, you remember, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species, with the genus, species, making up the scientific name. None of you remember that song? Sorry, seventh grade biology. Miss Hatzel, thank you. God bless you. So anyway, the genus is talking about descendants or every race, every ethnic group. So he's saying this dragnet's going to be cast where all seven continents, North America, Central America, South America, Africa, Europe, Asia, and Antarctica, it will be cast over the entire globe and it will gather every human being on the planet. All in one catch. That's what he's talking about. Now let's read on. Which when it was full, this dragnet, when it's full, what does full mean? The word full is a word that means to satisfy or to finish. Completion. It's like the fullness of times is what it speaks of. The totality of a period or the end of something. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 10. That in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ. Notice the language. When the fullness of times, he's going to gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on the earth in him. So there is coming a time, the fullness of times, the end of time. When is this? I don't know. But I know it's coming. Jesus is giving this in a sermon in Matthew. 
more than 2,000 years ago. But we're talking about it today. So after it was cast, what did they do? After it was full, rather, after the net was full, they do three things. Let me highlight those for you. Three things. Number one, they drew it to shore. Number two, it says they sat down. This, I'm reading here from verse 48. When it was full, they drew to shore, they sat down, and then they gathered the good into vessels and threw the bad away. So they gathered and threw. They drew to shore, sat down, they gathered and threw. Let's look at the first one. Drew to shore. What does it mean? When you have this net and you throw it into the water, when you're pulling it in, as long as the net is still in the water, you don't know what's in the net. It's all vague. It's all blended in there. But what they would do, and I saw them do this uh, as I was studying this on a, a beach, and when they pulled it onto the shore or pulled it onto the beach, now everything that was in the net that you couldn't see, now you could see. Everything that was hidden before all of a sudden became visible. So what does this mean about drawing to shore? When the net is in the water, you can't see what's in it, but when it's pulled up, everything is exposed. You can see things for what they really are. So there's coming a time where there's going to be a net cast into the earth and it's going to be drawn to shore. And what does that mean? Jesus is saying what he says in Luke 8, 17, for nothing is secret that will not be revealed nor anything hidden that will not be known and come to light. There's coming a drawing to shore in the world where everything that's hidden will be revealed. Everything that's hiding, everything that's pretending, making make-believe, all my secret sin, there's coming a drawing to shore where I cannot hide anymore. There's coming a drawing to shore where who's the real bad people in the earth, who are the good people, we don't really know. We will know because there's coming a drawing to the shore. Everything's going to be exposed. You know, like how right now you don't know what to believe and who's true and who's not. Well, there's coming a time where God says, I'm going to draw it to shore and everything will be seen for what it really is. Yeah. Know that it's coming. Second thing that happened after it was full, drew it to shore. And then something that's cool, two words, they just sat down. I thought, sat down. I kind of read over that. He said, no, stop. Sat down. What does that mean? Sat down. Whenever they would pull these fish in, the fishermen would sit down on the beach and they would begin to take and pull stuff out of the net and they would look at it and they would determine if it's something they wanted to keep, they would put it over here in maybe their container. If it's something they didn't want, they would throw it over here in a pile. So the fishermen sit, sit there and they determined what was kept and what was cast away. They sat down on the beach and determined that. What does that mean? This implies two things, deliberation in the sorting process and authority in the sorting process. So in other words, the one sitting there had the authority to determine what was kept and what was cast away. Let me read to you John chapter 5, verse 22. For the Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the Son, verse 27, and has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. Important phrase. Jesus called two things in the Bible. Number one, son of God. Why? Because he was conceived of the Holy Spirit. Joseph was not his daddy biologically. Born of a virgin. Jesus was son of God, conceived of the Holy Spirit. But he was also called son of man. Why was he called son of man? Because he was born of a woman. He was a human being born of a woman. So the Bible says that God will not judge anyone. But he's committed all judgment to Jesus. Why did he do that? He tells us because he is the son of man. Why is that important? When you're judging mankind, I'm going to give all judgment to the one who became like them. Who humbled himself and took on the form of a man, the Bible says. And so that he was tempted in all points like we are. So when he's judging you, I won't, or judging me, I won't be able to say, but Jesus, you don't understand. He'll be like, oh yeah, I do. I was like you. I was tempted like you. And I could have chose this, but I chose that. He will judge. He will be a righteous judge. So nobody, you know, people throw this around all the time. Oh boy. Check my words. Run around, run around, run around, run around. Okay. So people throw all this about don't judge me, don't judge me, don't judge me. We've confused judging. Judging is a sentence against you. Judging is not saying what's right and what's wrong. 
We can declare what's right and wrong according to the Bible and not judge someone. The only one that's going to do the judging is Jesus. But he's not the only one telling the truth. When I speak for him from the word of God, I'm telling the truth, but I'm not judging you. I will not judge you. Jesus will judge you. We got we to be open to conviction and not call it judgment. Anyway, that's a side note. So, the, so they, they, they sat down. Here's the third thing. You guys got to speed up. Let's go. Gathered and threw. <laughs> he sat down. The third thing he did, he gathered the good into vessels, but threw the bad away. He separated the good from the bad. Matthew chapter 25, look at this picture. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, when he comes back, Jesus is coming back, and all the holy angels with him, whoo, the holy ones, the two-thirds that stayed, one third left. They aren't holy. The holy angels are coming with him. Then he will, look at this, sit on the throne of his glory. He sit down. And all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them. This is exactly what's talking about in this parable. He will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats and he will set the sheep on his right hand with the goats on the left. Jesus is telling this parable. He said, the day's coming. You need to know this. People, it's listen to me, this sermon. Listen to me. He said, I, I, here's coming a day, and the, Jesus is going to sit on the throne, and he's going to separate. All the nations are going to be gathered to him, and he's going to separate the sheep on his right and the goats on the left. It's going to happen. Are you a sheep or are you a goat? Does it matter? Right or left matters. We'll see what it's talking about. He's going to separate them. Let's look on verse 49. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come forth, separate the wicked from the just. Two categories. How many categories? No, really. How many categories? There's not a third. There's not a fourth. There is no neutral. There's no agnostic. There is wicked and just. That's what Jesus said. There's sheep and goats. I'm somewhere in the middle. Goat. <laughs> Jesus said this. He said, I would that you are either hot or cold. But if you're lukewarm, I will literally vomit you out of my mouth. Well, I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of in the middle. I'm not on fire for God, but I'm sure not one of them really bad people. I'm just a good person. Goat. I'm not saying that to, to make you mad. I'm saying that to someone speak truth to you. There's two categories, wicked and just. I want to be in the right category. Anybody else? I want, to be in the, I want to be in the just category. How do I get in the just category? I don't get in the just category by doing things that are just. I don't do things good and nice and get in the just category. All of those category, all of those actions will get me in the goat category. Only one who is righteous is Jesus. So the only way I can get on his team is to go through the blood of the cross and allow him to come in and forgive me of all my sins. Then I become just. He who knew no sin became sin so that I might become the righteousness of God in him. Doesn't say I can become the righteousness of God if I do good deeds. I become the righteousness of God if I just quit doing these bad things. No. Righteousness of God only in Jesus. So the angels are coming. So it'll be at the end of the day, uh, end of the age. Look at verse, uh, go back to verse 39. Let me read this. The enemy who sowed them is the devil, but the harvest is the end of the age. And the reapers are the angels. Let me add this in. Uh, let me read this first. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend. All things that offend God. Not all things that offend people. God's not worried about things that offend people. He's worried about things that offend him. 
We got to make sure that we're not, see, I'm not trying to be mean and please don't give, it's not a license to be mean and hateful to people. I'm just saying that the things that he's going to gather out of his kingdom are the things that offend his word. And those who practice lawlessness and will cast them, look at this, and will cast them. So he's sorting. Got the sheep over here. He's got the good fish over here. Got the goats over here, the bad fish over here. And he's going to cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. We'll talk about that in a moment. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun, the kingdom of their father who has ears to ear. Let him hear. At the end of the age... He said the angel's going to come. They're going to gather everything. They're going to separate the just from the wicked at the end of the age. They're going to gather them out of him. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 27, for the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. Matthew 24, 30 says, then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, And they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Notice what's happening. That the Son of Man is coming back with his angels, and they're going to gather together every one. And he's going to separate who's on team Jesus and who's not. That's how it's going to go down. Jesus is giving this parable. He's talking the truth here. You're like, well, when is the end of the age? I don't know. I wish I could tell you. I'd love to be able to give you a time. But the problem is we're focused too much on when and we forget the fact that it's coming. It's coming. Jesus said there is an end of this age. And we've got to be focused on what matters according to the end of this age. And if we're not careful, we get caught up in what's going on in this age. And we forget about focusing on the end of this age. We're living our life just focused on this age and all the things that matter is work and our retirement and all that and blah, blah, blah. Hey, there's an end of this age. Everything else has an ending. Nothing else matters but Jesus. You know, we can keep kicking the can down the road and say, oh, maybe you're a teenager. Like, I don't have to worry about that. Dude, I've been hearing preachers talk about that a long time. We are not promised to ever make it to 15. You say, well, you're just trying to scare me. No, I'm trying to speak truth to you from someone who's lived a little bit and done a lot of funerals. There is no guaranteed date. Well, I'm 10 years old. It's going to be forever. You don't know. So I'm just being honest that there's coming an end of the age. I know you don't want it to come. I remember when I was, I was just 16 years old in 1988, and they wrote a book about 88 reasons why Jesus was coming back in 88. And I was traumatized <laughs> because I thought I was going to, I don't want to say it, people in the room. I thought I was going to miss out on getting married. I'll just let you fill in. It's like, God, don't come back now. I want to get married. See, all kinds of reasons why we can think, we just don't want to worry about this, don't want to think about it right now. But let me go on. So look what happens. (laughs) Jesus. Selah. Verse 49. So it will be at the end of the age. Look what will happen. The angels will come forth, separate the wicked, separate the wicked from the, from the just. Two categories, wicked from the just. What's he going to do with the wicked? Verse 50, and cast them, balo, same thing with the net. Cast them into the furnace of fire. Hear me, there is a furnace of fire and the wicked will be cast into it. Whether you like to hear it or not, it doesn't matter. It is the truth because Jesus has put it in two parables back, almost back to back in the same sermon. There is a furnace of fire that the wicked will be cast into. 
It wasn't made for them. That wasn't their destiny. That wasn't what God had for them. But if they reject and renounce the gospel of Jesus Christ, they become a goat, a tear, and they will be cast into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I'm going to paint some imagery for you. Not because, again, I'm trying to be whatever, but I think too many times this type of preaching, here's how we've swung the pendulum in the church. That we don't want to, we don't want to, so they would even, people even say things kind of mocking, like, like, well, you don't want those preachers, like, well, you're just going to burn in hell, you're just going to burn in hell. So what did we do? We swung the pendulum way over here, where now we never talk about hell. Never talk about an eternity separated from the presence of God because we don't want to offend. We want to feel good and come back. We just want you to come back. So let me tell you something that will make you happy and want to come back. I don't care if you come back. I care about your eternity. I care about where you spend eternity. There is a furnace of fire, and I want you to avoid it. But the only way you can avoid it is through Jesus. It says there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. What is this imagery? It's speaking about Revelation chapter 20. When once God's judgment comes, every single one of us will stand before the judgment throne. Individually. You won't stand with your posse. You won't stand with your friends. You won't stand with your spouse. You won't stand with your family. You won't stand with grandma. They'll hold your hand and tell everyone how much a good little boy you are. Grandma won't be there. You'll be standing by yourself. In that moment, it says, when, when judgment comes and I hear these words, Depart from me, I never knew you. The reality of that moment will be unbearable because my eyes will be open that I heard sermon after sermon after sermon. And I kept saying, maybe next week, maybe tomorrow, maybe some other time. When I get older, I'm, I'm not ready right now. I kind of want to do some other things. I'm kind of doing my thing right now. But sometime I'll get, you know, I'll get around to that. In that moment, there will not be time. In that moment, it will be unbearable to me. And there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, wailing and gnashing of teeth. And it will be, oh, what's gnashing of teeth? Is when you, oh, we don't want to talk about that because it's uncomfortable please please tell me something a little more happy and peppy Jesus saved this for the last parable of his sermon and he thought saw fit to tell people that there's coming a furnace of fire and at the judgment it will be wailing and gnashing of teeth realizing I have no hope. Oh! I think over and over in my head will be replayed church services just like this where I said, no, I don't want to right now. Oh, it's real. I missed it. Like, I don't, I don't like that. I didn't say I like it. I just said it's there. I got to do something with it. I got to tell people because Jesus said there's coming a furnace of fire and there's going to be wailing and gnashing of teeth. I don't want you to be in that situation. I, I want you to realize that right now you have an opportunity to say, Jesus, save me from my sin. Or I can just say, eh, because the percentages are, percentages are that you're going to leave. You're going to go home and eat lunch. You're going to have a good week, and you'll come back next week. This series will be over. Whew. Whew. I'm glad we're done talking about that one. That made me a little uncomfortable. <laughs> Hope we get on to something a little more lively next time. Something a little bit about my finances. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> something about three points to a better day at work. That's what I need. How to get my boss fired in Jesus' name. Sure what that means. But right, but right. Can I can I rip out my heart? Say this is why I'm on the earth. To tell you about a day that's coming. I'm telling you about a savior who died for you, who hung naked on a cross for your sins and for mine. 
And there's a coming an end. There's coming a dragnet day where that net's going to be cast. I don't know when it is, but it's coming. And that net's going to be pulled together. And everyone's going to be drawn on the shore. And then we're going to be exposed for who we really are. And I pretended and I faked and I tried to go through the motions. And, but now I'm standing before the one and true, the holy God. And I will not be able to hide. Because he will see me like I am. And it says here in verse 51, he says, have you understood all these things? <laughs> Jesus just lays out this incredible sermon in Matthew chapter 13. And he gets to the end and how he talks to them about being cast into the furnace of fire where there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth and then looks them in the eye and says, do you understand what I'm saying? Those of you that are nodding off and sleeping, do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? There's coming an end. And I don't want you to be in the furnace. Nothing else matters. My job, my retirement, my nothing else matters. Because in that day, it's just going to be him. We need parables about seeds. They were great. We love talking about stony places and thorny places and all of that, we like to be talking about the parable of the sower and words springing up. And we loved about the mustard seed and the leaven and the, all that treasure hidden in the field and the pearl of great price. Those are good. But we also need the parables about the wheat and the tares and the dragnet. And this is why Jesus finished that sermon with the dragnet, why I'm finishing the Kingdom Culture series with the dragnet, because I want the world to know that there's coming a casting. I don't know what it is, but I feel like it's close. And when I say a close, it could be several years from now or it could be several months from now. But what my concern is, is that we're caught up in this age so much. I'm speaking to the church I'm going to start unloading some barrels, so I hope you understand where I'm coming from. We, we get so caught up in issues of this age that the issue of the end of the age is no longer important or priority. We're, we're caught up in where the enemy of this age is trying to distract and trying to divide us into certain groups and get us into a white versus black, a Democrat versus Republican, a mask versus an unmask, a vaccinated versus an unmaskinated. He's trying to divide and conquer, and we're just eating it up, blah, 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 and going for it. I'm telling you, this age is coming to to an end. It's all going to be about two categories and it's not masked and unmasked. It's not vaxxed and unvaccinated. It's going to be the wicked and the just. And when we get in our categories of this age, we can forget that the one that's in a different category in this age, we're still supposed to love them. We're still supposed to witness to them and win them into the category that matters at the end of this age. When I stand before God, he's not going to ask me, did you wear a mask? He's not going to ask me whether you wear one or not. It's totally up to you. But I'm just saying, it's, we've got to focus on what matters. My passion for this is boiling over because I see him developing hatred and animosity and we're kicking people into sides and we're sorting them over here and we're not sorting according to Jesus. Jesus only sorted according to sheep and to goats. But we're coming over here in the sheep and separating the sheep into categories. The just are sitting over here watching how the sheep are dividing into categories and say, why would I want to be like one of them? They don't even like each other. feel the heart of Jesus that says this, I am not willing that any should perish, but that all should
should come to repentance. The one in that category that you don't like, Jesus says, I long for all to come to repentance. That one in the other party, oh, Jesus longs for them to come to repentance. That one that's on the other side of that issue with you, he longs for them to come to repentance. The dragnet is coming. I don't know when, but I believe God is asking you and I, which side will you be on? Will you be on the just or will you be on the wicked? We hope you enjoyed this message today and that you connected with Jesus. If this message has changed your life and you accepted Jesus as your Savior, well, you can text the word NEW LIFE to the number 618-243-0900. We would love to celebrate with you. If you would like to give to the ministry of The Roads Church, visit our website www.theroads.church for all of our giving options. We would also like to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel to receive notifications of our Sunday live services and to discover more of Pastor Chad's teachings. And now we pray that you experience God's presence throughout your day.